Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Today is February 1st, 2020. And I have about five different segments here for this episode. I hope you enjoy it. And let's get started. Um, First segment is entitled Norvell's Plan. Norvell's plan, I'm guessing it is to load up at the skilled positions and attract offensive linemen that way. Um, Florida State did sign a projected left tackle on Monday. Obviously, Norvell is going to have a aggressive and attacking offense. I'm kind of excited now. Florida State has added some pieces, but these guys are true freshmen. How much can Florida State count on them? I'm less skeptic and slightly more optimist. Florida State has not solved the offensive line issues, not by a long shot, but it's better than three months ago. Norvell seems very intelligent and organized. I was not on his bandwagon from the very beginning. I like what he's doing now. I hope he succeeds and he is winning me over as a fan. Um, You know, I was looking at some of the reviews on my podcast and, you know, one guy said, you lost me at no Norvell. I mean, I didn't follow Memphis football before um, Florida State got on a uh, his radar or vice versa. I really didn't. I mean, to me, Norvell is the only one who wanted the job. Everybody else was moving away from it or they were using the Florida state job to, to get a higher pay at their current job. Um, you know, I like what he's done so far, man. Um, you know, but I think we need a couple of more offensive tackles. I mean, the the this position has really uh been an Achilles heel for this program the last four years. Um and we really haven't had a really good offensive line since the national championship team. And they really were not that great, but they were a heck of a lot better than anything we've had from then until now. So um and we still need to uh identify the quarterback. Um I got another segment about that. But, uh, you know, a guy sent me a message on YouTube last night. You need to go watch. He even put the name of another uh, uh, podcast and website in the in the uh, in the uh, message. I'm not competing against those guys. I don't I don't care what they do. I'm just a fan that likes this football team. I, I said in the beginning, I'm not an insider. I'm not trying to be a reporter. I'm not trying to break news. You know, I'm just a fan speaking on the team from a fan's perspective. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, don't listen. It's really that simple. But, you know, just being negative, just to be negative, that's just like a a common thing in the world now. You know, I don't have anything positive to say, so let me just go negative. You know, grow up, man. Nobody's got time for that. Okay? If you're not a Florida State fan or you just, you know, miserable in your life, man, go 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 get a hobby, man. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry to go off on that tangent, but you know, I just hate negative everything. You know, if you can't be positive, man, keep your feelings to yourself. I don't want to hear it. All right. And moving on to the next segment, one final look at the Super Bowl before the game. The Kansas City uh, offense will get theirs. The San Francisco defense will have to limit what they get. Um, I don't see the Kansas City defense stopping the San Francisco offense. Jimmy G is the key. We know Kansas City will load up to stop the run. Um... So throwing eight eight times cannot happen. Um, Mosert 
will play a big role, obviously. Brita and Coleman also. Coleman, as of today, they're saying he's okay. He might play. D Ford is not 100%. George Kittle is playing with a torn labrum. He's been playing with it uh, throughout the season and the playoffs. He looks awesome. Um, still, my final prediction is going to be a shootout. 49ers, 38-35. Go 49ers. Um, everybody knows I've said it the last couple of weeks. I've been a, I was a 49ers fan before I was a Florida State fan. I became a 49ers fan in, uh, when I was five years old. And then I became a Florida State fan when I was eight years old. So, um... I mean, it's just it's just awesome when your team makes it makes it to a Super Bowl or a college football playoff or a national championship game. You know, it just I don't know. You know, just being a fan, it just just makes you uh you know feel good, I guess. Um, but the Super Bowl, man, I just the defensive line is gonna have to come up big. For the San Francisco 49ers. They're going to have to play out of this world. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Bosa get MVP, man. Or maybe D Ford or somebody. I know D Ford is going to be extra motivated for this game. Seeing how, seeing as how the uh, Kansas City Chiefs casted him off. After that offsides penalty in the AFC Championship game against the Patriots last year. So, we'll see what happens. Um... My next segment is entitled Projecting the Starting Quarterback and Offensive Line at Florida State. I really don't know who it will be. James Blackman has the most experience. Jordan Travis has the most, most athleticism, but he has a cap gun arm. Rotomaker, Purdy, and Rector, I don't know anything about uh, these guys. I've watched some of their film. Uh, uh, high school their high school film they are, everybody looks good in high school okay you wouldn't be at Florida State if you didn't look good at high school I don't really think what you did in high school is going to be transferable to college because it's it's a different it's a different speed to the college game just like when you go from college to the NFL we don't know if your game is going to transfer to the NFL for the same reason so um I don't even know if the starting quarterback is on this roster at this point. You know, Norvell could surprise us and get a uh, grad transfer or just a transfer. I know he's on record as saying he's not looking for one. But, hey, if the right guy comes along, I don't see him turning the guy down. Um, I mean, whoever he picks to be the quarterback, I hope it's the right choice. It's going to be hard for Purdy to come in in May or June. And, you know, pick up this offense. You know, he might be supremely intelligent, but it's going to be kind of hard to march a freshman out there in Atlanta against West Virginia in a neutral site game. So we'll see, man. Whoever he picks, I hope they, um, I hope it's the right choice. Um, starting offensive line projections. Uh, Devontae Taylor. Darius Washington, Andrew Baselli, Andrew Baselli, Dante Lucas, and Ira Henry. I think those are the two guys or the five guys that are the leaders in the clubhouse right now. I like the offensive tackle they signed Monday. I like uh, Lloyd Ellis. I like uh, the dude Herring. And um, we'll see. We got a whole bunch of other offensive linemen on this roster, too. They haven't really done anything you know, in their time at Florida State. So I want to see what Christian Meadows can do. I want to see what Chaz Neal can do. Um, and it's a bunch of other ones that I don't even want to mention. But um, this is, um, I feel like those five guys gives us the best chance to be successful in uh, 2020. Um, with the exception of Dante Lucas, none of these guys on the roster really, you know, project as like road graders or uh, uh that 
they're not gonna they don't scare me as far as like okay this guy can move people Dante Lucas is the only one that has that trait in my opinion I could be wrong but from what I've seen I watched all the games last year you know he was the only one that was really moving people um basically Florida State needs more talented offensive linemen and I'm giving them credit for signing the guy on Monday we need about two or three more of those guys um so let me know what you think about that segment moving on to the next segment should the power five break away from the ncaa in football only all right i think they should the ncaa is so inconsistent with everything that they do when a football player transfers or and puts in the waiver to play immediately the response times varies for each player two schools can commit the same infraction and get two different punishments it's crazy the one thing you could do in ncaa is try to bring back the college football video game um but mark emmert said it won't come back unless players can promise they won't sue the ncaa power five break away and start your own league and make money you're basically already doing it um the strange thing is i can actually see this happening one day um just for football you know they basically do it now they the um the presidents and the athletic directors basically you know do their own championship the college football playoff where whereas other sports get like a ncaa trophy um so it's just a matter of just breaking away from the ncaa and starting your own league which they base like i said they've already done they just haven't made it official um i guess having a governing organization over your sport makes you look more legit but uh to me all the ncaa does is cause problems you're not stopping these guys from getting paid the boosters are still paying players to come to their school you're not going to stop that you're not going to stop the extra benefits from coming in so i think slowly but surely they're peeling back each layer that is in the way of these guys getting some kind of compensation for their services because football is a is a deadly game it can be a deadly game undoubtedly if you play this game for an exit amount of years you're going to have some lifelong you know discomforts so we'll see what happens man let me know what you think about that segment all right and my last segment for this episode is going to be the internet the internet has revolutionized life in just the last 20 years especially in sports almost every sporting event in this country can be streamed you can get polling information about sports and whatever else in a matter of minutes you can watch sporting events on your phone almost anywhere podcasting is a byproduct of the internet being a uh, youtuber is a byproduct of the internet when something happens in sports it's almost instantly seen via social media or sporting apps the internet has changed the way fans get content forever from the very beginning i thought the internet was a fad but it has taken over everything we do it's kind of scary um you know would sports be the same right now if it wasn't for the internet possibly um internet the internet has changed the sport sports for better i mean you get more viewership um you know they sometimes they'll have like the social media stuff on certain games what people are saying um even in professional wrestling they'll they'll have something at the bottom of the uh, the screen where fans are on twitter saying something or whatever so the internet is not going anywhere so hopefully they can use it to make sports better 
in terms of getting information and putting out positive stuff. So let me know what you think about that episode or that segment. Excuse me. Um, That's going to conclude this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, It's available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts. Um, If you're listening to this on YouTube, please scroll down to the description and click on one of the links. Please rate, review, and subscribe. I want to thank all the uh, loyal listeners who listen every day. I really appreciate it. You're helping my podcast grow. And as always, go Knowles.